It's together. It is together. Come on up here, honey. I hope you lost your your wealth of knowledge. Well, the minuscule knowledge I have. You don't have (laughs) minuscule. You got a lot. You got a lot. I'll take it for this new virus. New knowledge, new virus, huh? So, hey, I'm Dr. Jackie, and about a week ago, I got my COVID vaccine. And I posted it because I wanted to share with you guys that I am getting the vaccination. However, there were several of you who supported it, but there were tons of you who very strongly opposed the fact that I was getting the vaccine. So today, I want to share the facts. And I'm an OBGYN by training, fellow of American College of OBGYN. I've been practicing 23 years, and I do have to talk to women who are asking questions about the vaccine. However, you guys made me aware that you're just an OBGYN. <laughs> so I decided to invite, to invite a friend of mine, my castmate, and a lady who has a whole lot more credentials in public health. So today, I want to share with you my friend, my castmate, Dr. Contessa Metcalf. (laughs) Hello, everybody. And as you all know, I have a background in family medicine, but you don't know, also trained in preventive medicine, and I have a master's in public health. And I remember last year when I was telling everybody I wanted to be Surgeon General, nobody even knew what it was. This year, everybody knows what it is. Household word. And public health is also a household word. Right. So we're not here to persuade or dissuade you from getting COVID vaccinations. What we are here today to do is present the facts. So I wanted to do a couple of things. One. The question was, why so fast? Yeah. The FDA has authorized the emergency use of Pfizer and Moderna vaccinations for individuals, 16 for Pfizer, 18 for uh, Moderna. The EUA mm-hmm. is supported by the Secretary of Health and Human Services declaration that circumstances exist to justify the emergency use of drugs and biological products during the COVID-19 vaccine. The question has been, why so fast? And so I wanna make you laugh, Contessa, on what's in the vaccination. Obviously, messenger RNA, and we'll talk about that a little bit, but I wrote down what's in Pfizer and what's in Moderna. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing about it is, there are things in it that, if you go way back to your uh, organic chemistry days, you might be able to read some of this stuff for me. Mm-hmm. So since you're smarter than not me, Contessa, <laughs> not I, even. I want you to read the stuff that's in the Pfizer vaccine. Okay, so lipids are another word for fats, right? Mm-hmm. But read them, girl. Four hydroxybutyl A's and nidial, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. This hexane six one dial, mm-hmm. this hexyl decanoate. 2 peg polyethylene glycol call nn diacetyl triacyl okay so don't keep yeah trying. all those yeah we know potassium chloride right. but what's the very last ingredient sucrose which you is get sugar. sugar yeah yes yeah. and i also wrote down what's in moderna which is very similar Sorry. it has the messenger rna and it has lipids with all those names that we can't read but the very last thing in the Moderna vaccine is sugar, sugar, yeah. sucrose. Yeah. So there are a lot of chemical products in it. Now, this is what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Get the food out of your cabinet. And <laughs> see if it has some Look of the same up stuff. The ingredients in the foods that you have on your shelf, potato chips, yeah. all of those products that we're consuming as food. And see, don't you see some of the exact same chemical makeup in your food actually a longer list yes (laughs) Yes. and the way they do it is from the most to the least so when you read your ingredients the very first thing is what's most so in both of these is messenger rna and preservatives the rest of the things are pretty much preservatives things that make it last the shelf life Uh Uh monobasic phospho Mm -hmm. for potassium phosphate sodium chloride all those things are preservatives and if you look at it though you have preservatives in your food yes And so before you start saying, oh my God, I don't want the vaccine, which again, we're telling you it's a personal choice, but read your ingredients on your foods as well. Now, I want to go on and say the messenger RNA versus DNA. Mm -hmm. Now, I know your flu vaccine has recombinant DNA. Mm -hmm. They take DNA material Mm -hmm. and they shape it 
to look like the flu virus. Mm -hmm. So when the DNA goes into your body, your body thinks, oh my God, the flu is in here. Mm -hmm. And it starts to elicit an immune response and you start to secrete histamines. And that's why you start to feel achy, yeah. and maybe a low grade fever and headache. The exact same thing is done with messenger RNA, except you can do that faster. Yeah. Hence, that's how we got this vaccine a little faster. They use a messenger RNA. You know what I like to equate it to? I used to play basketball, right? And so sometimes when we would go and play basketball, we would have to watch the tape of the other team mm -hmm. to figure out what kind of plays they're going to run, mm -hmm. right? And so essentially what mRNA is, is giving you the playbook in advance mm -hmm. of the game. Mm -hmm. So you can see how to strategize against the other team. Your, your body's immune That's system. That's correct. Exactly. That's correct. And so, this is what the mRNA does. Yes. On the SARS-CoV-2, which is the actual virus itself that causes COVID-19, there are what's called spike proteins. And those spike proteins actually allow that virus to penetrate inside the cell and cause the disease. Mm -hmm. What the vaccine does is give, because the spike proteins are pretty unique mm -hmm. to this virus. Mm -hmm. So the mRNA gives that information about those spike proteins. And so when your body actually sees a real one, one from the virus, it's already seen it before. Yes. So the vaccine, vaccine shot number one, gives you somewhat of an information, mm -hmm. right? But the second vaccine, vaccine number two, gives you really a lot more information. And so then when you actually see the real thing, your body is already ready and geared up to fight right. the virus. So again, you're not getting live virus like mumps, measles, and rubella. You get live attenuated virus where they kill the virus or they take a particle. You're not getting any live virus in this vaccine. You're getting material that has been shaped to look like or has some of the proteins from the virus, but not the real virus. Let me clarify, you are not getting live virus, you're not getting any particles of the any virus, virus but your body will recognize this material just like the flu vaccine and goes, oh my God. It starts, and it goes into the macrophages and dendritic cells, which are- You said I'm like a doctor now, Dr. Jackson. <laughs> which, which are immune it. response. Uh, cells Sexy and it starts to make antibodies. Mm -hmm. So now your body, like you said, yeah. you got antibodies waiting. So if yeah. real COVID comes into your body, it's not to say you may not get COVID, but your chances of dying from COVID or getting real sick from COVID has been lowered. That's right. So again, you might get the flu after having the flu shot. Yeah. And well, people have got symptoms. The some, they yeah. get some sad symptoms. They get yeah. some like, and there's two different types. But this isn't the first emergency use authorization that was provided. So actually when a person gets really sick and gets sick with COVID and goes into the hospital, there are treatments in the hospital that also got fast tracked. Actually antibodies, which you just talked about. The that's right, monoclonal antibodies are actually, there are artificial ones that were created to essentially do the same thing, to be given to people who are fighting COVID that helps them to fight it, right? And that is, was also approved very, very fast in emergency use authorization. Absolutely. Because most people don't get really, really sick, they don't actually get the opportunity to get that treatment, right. Rindesivir. Another thing that was right. really fast that got approved for emergency use is just that vaccines are going to be given to a lot more people. And so that's maybe why people know that this happened faster. But it's not the first time, even right. with COVID. And let me tell you two things. One... Even that uh, hydroxychloroquine. Yes. They've tried that. Yes. So that so was, many studies. And that wasn't for uh, COVID, but they've used that as well. I took it when I went to um, Africa. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for malaria I wanna, I want to say to you, having been a breast cancer patient twice, mm -hmm. had none of the traditional conventional medicines worked for wow. me, I would have done wow. any research drug wow. out there. So to me, that is the same comparison. I would have used an emergency use of whatever they had to fight for my life. And so again, I'm saying to you, you have to decide. I'm gonna keep saying that. But there are protocols for patients who have terminal illnesses. That's right. That they use that haven't been studied. That's right. For that, they, I mean, they've done a couple of um, experimental uses of those drugs to say, okay, it did seem to combat that cancer. So we're going to try this more and more and more. Same picture here. Yes, it was fast. No, we don't have all the data. But what we do know, it has proven 95% mm -hmm. effective mm -hmm. in the 20 plus thousand people that it has been driving.